the case stars ecos focusing tutorial this one is going to be about autofocus and filter offsets so i'm going to start by bringing up the filter settings pop up and uh, i'm really only going to talk about the first few columns so down in column one is the list of filters um, column two is just the exposure that will be used if you select that filter and you wish to do an autofocus on it. So the way it's configured here, I'm just gonna use one second for luminance um, and five seconds for my narrowband filters here. Now, really I'm gonna focus on the next three columns, offset, autofocus, and lock filter. So if you wish to autofocus when uh, a particular filter is um, brought it is, becomes the active filter, then you just need to check the autofocus box here. So as an example, um, I'm gonna check the autofocus uh, box for luminance red and green. Now, what I'm also gonna do is you're gonna see that red um, does not have a lock filter, whereas green is locked to the luminance filter. Now, what that means is if I wish to um, focus on green, what is actually gonna happen is that it's gonna change filters to luminance, run also focus on luminance, um, and then switch back to green. It's then gonna apply a filter offset between luminance and green. In this case, difference between zero and four, um, and then it will start taking subs on green um, once that's been done. So, over here, I've just set up a, a dummy um, or a very, a very basic um, sequence. So I've got one sub exposure on loom, another one sub exposure on, uh, on the same filter loom, um, and then the same for, for red and green. So the purpose of this really is just to show you how the uh, focus module will respond to the, this particular sequence. So if I kick it off, um, the first thing that's gonna happen is it's gonna start with luminance. Um, luminance in the filter settings pop-up is configured to run autofocus, so that is exactly what it's gonna do. So it's gonna kick off an autofocus run on loom. Um, so you can see here in the filter, um, it's, uh, it's on loom, and you can see in the title of the V-curve, it says loom as well. So it's going to run through um, this autofocus run and it's going to use the results of that uh, to position the focuser and take the one um, subframe um, as specified. So we'll just wait for that to complete. So it's solved to 36700. Um, Back here on the uh, capture tab, you can see that the, uh, the first luminance sub is in progress. So that one's now come in. It's now gonna move on to the second luminance um, uh, line in this particular sequence. Now the reason I put that in there is just to show that uh, it's only when the luminance filter swaps in that the autofocus will run. It didn't run the uh, on the next occurrence. Back over here, um, we've moved on to the red um, set of sequences, in this case, just one exposure. So back to the filter settings, you can see that um, red will trigger an autofocus, which is what's in progress. So you can see the filter's red, um, and red is the filter that is being used in the V-curve. So it's running through, um, just auto focusing now on the red filter. So again, we'll just let that run through to completion. And when it does complete, it will take that uh, sub exposure having focused for red. Okay, so in this case, it's focused to 36646, which is the filter position. And back over here, you can see that we're now running the, uh, the red sub. So we'll just let that one come in. There we go, the red subs come in. The next line 
um, in the sequence is green. Now, green's a bit more interesting because green has got a lock filter of loom. So what's actually happened is the filter, uh, sorry, the focus um, window is now running autofocus on loom. So you can see loom here and loom on the V curve. So it's going to run through autofocus on loom and then it is going to apply this offset. So the offset is the difference between the lock filter, in this case luminance, and the capture filter, um, in this case green. So there's four tick offset. So what it's going to do when it completes the autofocus is move four ticks outwards. Okay, so we can see what's happened um, is that the luminance filter focused to 36668, which is what's been put into the filter, the last um, autofocus solution in the filter settings. Um, it's then applied the difference between um, 4 and 0, which is 4, obviously. Um, so it's moved basically out by 4. Now I've got um, overscan on, so it's moved out by 104 and back by 100. But the net effect is to go from 36668 to 36672, so 4 ticks outwards. And then obviously it's taken that sub. So that's a simple sequence with autofocus ticked. Now, if I change this around a little bit and take the autofocus off, I'll show you what happens. So I can go back to my sequence. Um, I don't need two luminances. I think we understand what they do. Just reset and I can rerun. So once again, luminance is the first line in the sequence. Luminance does have the autofocus on, so it is going to autofocus again, which is what's happening. So it's going to run through autofocus as before, and then it's going to use that filter position to do the, uh, the sub, the luminance sub. So we'll just let that complete. <coughs> Okay, so this time it's solved to 36639. Back over on the sequence, the luminance line is in progress. After that, it's going to move to red. Now, red won't also focus, but red will apply an offset. In this case, it'll move in by 21 ticks. Okay, it's moved, the focuser has moved inwards by the 21 ticks. So we've gone from 639 to 618, which is correct. Um, and it's just running through on red. Now it's going to move to green. So green, what it's going to do there is it's going to move from red to green. So the minus 21 and the plus 4 is a difference of 25 ticks. So it will move 25 ticks out from where it was. So you can see here it's moved out by 1, 2, 5 and back in by 100. So a net movement of 25. So that's basically gone to 643 and then obviously it's taken the uh, the green sub so that's kind of it there that's really the set of combinations that you can use with either running um, autofocus either directly on the filter or with a lock um, and or applying offsets so this is probably the simplest way to set this up is is you know, if you're a beginner, um, you can probably just auto focus on everything. It gets the job done um, and it's the simplest way to configure it. Um, you know, if you're having some problems, maybe on narrow bands, for instance, um, you know, there may not be too many stars and you may need to sort of increase the uh, exposure times quite a bit in order to uh, actually focus. What you could consider doing is setting up offsets and you know, running autofocus on your luminance filter um, with an offset for your narrow band filter. You know, or if, for instance, you have a, a par focal setup where everything focuses at the same point, you know, you may want to sort of tune your autofocus run for your favorite filter. Again, probably the one that lets the most light through 
um, which will mean you're, you know, you'll see the most stars and you can probably get away with the shortest exposure and therefore the, uh, the autofocus runs will be fastest. Um, and, you know, in that particular case, you know, you tag um, uh, the lock filter against your favorite filter and put zero in the offsets. But based on your, um, you know, on your setup, there, uh, you know, you have a couple of ways of uh, of potentially um, setting up your uh, your filters for autofocus or to use offsets if uh, if you want to try that. So, how might you um, go about setting up the filters or the filter offsets? Um, so, probably the old school way of doing it would be uh, to basically go outside, run autofocus um, a couple of times on each of the filters that you're interested in setting up the offsets for, look at the, the uh, position that um, autofocus is solving to, get yourself a piece of paper, do the maths to work out um, what the difference between your filters is and put those numbers in here. So that works fine of course. Um, there is over here um, this button called Build Offsets, which will launch a utility that will um, help you do that, and it will um, kind of do all the maths for you, and you can kind of leave it to uh, just get on with its uh, with its thing. Um, all it will do is it'll list out your filters, and you have to go in and decide. Um, which filter you want to use as your reference filter. By default, it'll be the first one. Um, if I wanted, for instance, red to be um, my reference, I could just double click on red and um, that the last risk will move from luminance to red. Um, however, in my case, it makes sense to use luminance, so I'm just gonna leave the, uh, the asterisk there on loom. Um, select the number of runs you want. Um, I'm gonna use five. Um, I'm just going to let this run for the first four filters because otherwise it just takes too long. But in principle, if you're setting this up for all of your filters, then you know you would um, probably leave however many runs you want to do. Um, I, I would suggest five. You can go higher or lower. Um, it's up to you. Um, obviously, the more runs you take, the longer the whole process will take. Um, and you know, once you've configured uh, a few numbers like I have here in uh, in the uh, in the pop-up, just hit run, and the process will start. Now, what it will do is it will take over control of the uh, the focus module um, for the duration of its uh, of its run, um, and what it's going to do is it's going to run an automatic autofocus for each of the filters. Um, that you've selected that have um, a number of runs greater than zero, and it's going to dis display the results in the table. So in my case, it's going to run autofocus on loom five times, then it's going to swap filters to red, do another five autofocus runs on red, then it's going to swap to green, do the same thing, then to blue, do the same thing. So. As you can imagine, this is going to take a little while to run. Um, when I did this on my uh, rig outside uh, for all of the filters, um, I've got seven filters. I did it five times. That's 35 autofocus runs. So that took me over an hour. Um, but uh, it's easy enough to work out how long it's going to take. Obviously, just work out how many autofocus runs you need. Um, work out you know roughly how long each autofocus run takes on your equipment and uh, you can figure out how long it'll take. So what I suggest you do is I would pick somewhere um, with a lot of stars where you're getting good, um, so, you know, you're getting good uh, autofocus solves. Um, I would try to make sure that you know you have a rough idea how long this is going to take, and that you know nothing um, is going to disturb the process. So you know you're not going to, you know, go. Uh, you know your scope's not going to end up pointing at a tree or you're not going to you know cross the meridian or something like that halfway through the run um, and then just let it go and it'll it'll do its thing so basically um, what it is doing is as I said earlier it's it's running autofocus and it's putting the result in the table so 
for the first two runs um, on luminance, you can see the results. It's working out an average as it goes. And as more runs come in, that average will get updated. Um, because we said luminance was the reference filter for this exercise, the, the new offset it's calculating for luminance is always going to be zero. But once it moves on to some of the other filters, you'll see the, uh, the new offset getting calculated by looking at the difference in the average um, solutions for you know, for example, red versus versus luminance, and it'll calculate the appropriate offset there. So um, I'm not going to wait until this um, finishes. I'll I'll cut back when uh, when this is uh, when this is completed. So here we are, um, having run the build filter offsets utility. Um, as you can see, it's filled in all of the uh, focus runs for the first four filters as expected. Um, so it's worked out the average for each of the filters and it's worked out the offset um, versus the reference filter, which uh, was the luminance filter, which we set at the start. Um, so what I would normally do in this situation um, I would review the data and make sure that there aren't any sort of outliers in the focus procedure that uh, you might be wishing to do something about. Now, these all look fine because it's just a simulator, but let's, let's just, as an example, um, let's just say that the fifth run of luminance was not um, what we we're after. Um, now we could just change the average, but obviously we don't know what to change it to. Probably the simplest thing and the thing I would do um, if we didn't like this fifth run is I would set it to zero. Now, what that'll do is it'll just take um, that fifth run out of the average process, change the average for luminance and then rework out the offsets. So if we're happy with that, um, we can just save it. Um, if, for instance, we didn't want to say blue, we could just untick that. Um, and when I press save, what's going to happen is it's going to copy anything uh, that has a, a ticked save next to it. So in this case, luminance, red and green. It'll update into the filters, uh, the filter settings pop up up here. So expect to see um, these update, which is what's happened. And that is pretty much how you can use the utility to set up your, uh, your offsets. Well, I hope you found this useful and see you next time.